And welcome back here at Heroes of the Dorm. I am Grubby Manos Genkhuizer. With me is still Kevin, uh, sorry, wow. <laughs> Sean Forkort, wow. Jester Delaney. <laughs> I know that I go by uh, you know many hats, but uh, right now within the four courts, we're just gonna stick with Sean. And uh, yes, but so far, you know, we have done two of our eight matches today. We have seen not only a 2-0, but actually a second 2-0. And some of the favorites you've already now seen in these brackets going forward with very strong play. Yeah, we're looking to go into our third match here in Heroes of the Dorm. This is the tournament we're doing. We've gone to the face, the Super 16. The game we're playing is Heroes of the Storm, but let's take a little bit of a look what Heroes of the Storm is. Welcome to Heroes of the Storm, Blizzard Entertainment's action-packed team brawler. Players can choose from a variety of Blizzard heroes, each with unique strengths and weaknesses, to create five-player team compositions that support versatile strategies. These strategies are then put to the test on a diverse set of battlegrounds, each with their own unique objectives. Hire the ghost pirate Blackheart. Summon a powerful Grave Golem. Every battleground is different and presents a unique environment for competition. However, the criteria for victory is constant. Destroy the opposing team's core. Heroes will grow in power and talent over the course of a single game as they take out minions, enemy fortifications, and of course, the opposing team's heroes. Your effectiveness at teamwork and collaborative play will make or break you. All right, that's Heroes of the Storm. It's a game we all know and love here, and we're so excited to be showing you more about this game. 16 teams are battling here, and we are now about to watch match three. But first, let's take a look at the bracket, man. Yeah, absolutely. So as we said, we've already done two of our eight matchups today. 16 teams, only eight of them can move on. Our game number one today was Western Ontario and Assumption College, and that was the boys from Ontario, close to my heart, I gotta say, going onward to the Epic Eight. Really good to see. But as we just saw as well, University of Texas at Arlington went up against Arizona State, the favorite by far of that matchup, and Arizona State really did deliver to get into that Epic Eight. Yeah, 2-2-0 two, two, victories there. The, the first battleground is always set, but uh, the second one is the map, uh, the battleground of choice for the losers. So far, that has not been enough yet to, uh, to save them. Next match we're going to be showing is actually going to be the Florida Gulf Coast University, which call themselves the Eagles Esports, versus Texas A&M University, Team Maroon. It's really good to see just, uh, you know, bringing forth that, that color. It's maroon is just something we don't see a lot of, but don't be fooled. Team Maroon is going to be the red team going for it, but the Eagle Esports will represent blue, and, you know, Fort Myers up against College Station. This is definitely going to be a heck of a match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they, uh, they, I don't know if they have experience playing against each other yet. Some of these teams already have played in a number of amateur competitions. We don't know so much about these yet. So, we will start trying to draw an identity of them as we see what heroes are they going to be picking. How is their team play? Here is the guys behind Eagles Esports. We've got Michael Zites, Brito, Joseph Eloden, Willett, Daniel, Danny Boy, Hamill, Brendan, Sergeant Balanced, <laughs> McMonagall, and Derek Whiteout, Devon Bryant. Man, Sergeant Balanced. I absolutely adore that name. <laughs> we do have a hero in Heroes of the Storm called Sergeant Hammer. Uh, so it's a definitely a play on words there. But again, these guys defeated many hundreds of teams to get here into the top 16. They got through the 64 and the 32 yesterday. Really well played from them. There's some coverage. Got to watch a few of these teams in action. And they're definitely top notch. I've had no complaints about any of these guys. But who are their opponents? And it will be Team Maroon from the Texas A&M. Uh, Khalil Noctis Armstrong. Jin Peng Revenge Yu. Jeremy Ghosts on Fry. Almost said fire there. Ghost on fire would have been fantastic. Uh, but Michael near Leet, uh, Fayomi, and Zachary don't kill Mech Acosta. Do they have a Mech on their team? I think it's like, don't kill me, Kay. Oh, don't kill me, Kay. Awesome. <laughs> don't like, kill me. All right, you've got an agreement. We won't, but we can't make any guarantees for Eagles Esports as these guys will be going up against each other. All right, we've seen their roster. Soon uh, we'll be going into the draft, but first we're gonna take a little bit of a look at the first battleground that they'll be playing on, which will be, once again, for all round of 16 matches, the very nice and intricate and strategical Cursed Hollow. 
Curse of the Hollow is a map with three lanes. Be powerful in every lane and try to defend against the enemy. You can do this with your heroes. You can also do it by cursing your enemies by collecting tributes. Collecting three tributes will give you that curse on the enemy, which will disable enemy fortification defenses. Furthermore, there are other objectives on the map, like six mercenary caps. Capture these lovely siege giants, or perhaps the grave golem, which is all powerful. Capture them and fight for your side, they will. Attack the enemy core with all these powers, and you will be able to clinch victory from the opponent. Yeah, and it is all about that core. You take down the core, you get the win. You put a point on the board, and you go to map number two. Will we actually see a game three today? They are definitely a delicacy when it comes to a lot of esports because everything is on the line. You're taking punches, you're, t you're taking the hits, but you're still coming out very even. So far, we've had two zeros, but it's going to be up to these teams to really show us what they can do in this first matchup of their best of three. All right, let's take a look at the draft. I can't wait. The draft is a very strategical part here of Heroes of the Storm. And actually, we see a very... Can I say unusual pick here for the first? Well, we have traditionally seen a Jaina first pick so far in every match. This time though, Team Maroon, they're gonna swap it up a little bit. Near Leet is actually gonna take Taronda. And Taronda, as a support, it definitely brings a lot of utility to her uh, composition. With the Hunter's Mark, the Lunar Flare, we saw big AoE damage compositions with her Starfall. It's a very versatile character. That also sets her up very nicely for the rest of the team because these next picks could actually go really any way in terms of strategy. Yeah, that's, that's very true. And although the University of Texas at Arlington just now did not clinch victory on the second battleground, they did have that combination of heroes. Diablo and Taranda. They work together really well, very powerful in the early game, and they, they don't really relinquish any of that power in the mid to late game, but I just want to stress how well they work together. It's a very popular strategy right now among professional gamers around the world, and seemingly as well for these collegiate uh, players here. Very nice. So what they're doing is they're saying, okay, you've got Taranda, we don't want you to have Diablo and pull that combination on us. So that's the first pick for them. And they're following it up with Vala. Yeah, a very mainstay ranged assassin in Heroes of the Storm. She was the most picked hero when it came to the very beginning with 889 teams vying for that free tuition prize at the end of the rainbow. But Vala overall has been a very mainstay hero in general in Heroes of the Storm. She has survived many patches, not a lot of changes, and she has really stayed at the forefront of ranged assassin picks. Now we see for Team Maroon, the second pick is Uther, the good man Uther. He is a devout champion, a paladin of the light, and he uses the light as a support to try and keep his allies alive. Very special about Uther, and I want to take a look at this, is his passive trait. Every hero has a passive trait, and they can use this to uh, add extra power and supplement their allied forces with that power. His trait is called Eternal Devotion, and it's as sweet as it sounds. After he perishes and he gets taken down, there'll be a period of 10 seconds where he will move around in an ethereal form and he's able to dispense healing to all his allies. So even after getting taken down, he'll be able to contribute to the fight before his timer starts again and he will come back into the battlefield. So very nice pick there in Uther. And he'll get followed up with Jaina, who we didn't really expect her to be omitted from the choices, no, did we, Jester? not at all. I mean, she wasn't the first pick choice here for Team Maroon, but at the same time, this is a really powerful combination. They don't have any warriors on board yet, but at the same time, with double support and now the Jaina. The Jaina by herself, not the most durable of heroes. She is susceptible to getting bursted down and taken out of the fight repeatedly, especially earlier on in the game. She's just not meant for the sturdy damage, but she is a ferocious mage. She can really deal what she cannot take, and now with two supports on her side, that is a great setup. Yes, exactly. Well, Danny Boy will be trying to counter some of that icy magic from Jaina and try to heal his allies and keep them alive. Melfurion is a support that has all of his spells coming at a long range. He can do a small trickling of Moonfire, deal some damage. He can heal his allies. He can also br have powerful roots come up from the ground and pin the enemy hero in place. Just as he uses Root, Sagar can use a Devouring Maul to catch the enemies, but that's a heroic ability. A very uh, 
high win rate hero Sagara here. She doesn't get picked right away usually, but she's very effective, isn't she? She did land number four on the top five of the most effective heroes that we've seen here in Heroes of the Dharma. Very popular overall hero as well. You might not know it, but she, yeah, she is a female. She is a Zerg queen from the StarCraft universe, but when she really augments her teams with things like that Devouring Maw, creeps, uh, sorry, the tumors with the creeping uh, that we see a lot, the purple stuff more or less, <laughs> uh, that's a great vision for the team, and she can summon out various units to do her bidding. It's a very powerful pick. Don't kill me, K goes for the ETC. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, if he doesn't want to be killed, then he should stay away from the front line. But he's a warrior. But warriors are hard to take down. It's really hard to kill them. So don't kill me, Kay. Might actually get away with that. It may be a prophetic name. <laughs> and the final pick there with Sylvanas, a ranged damage dealer, which uh, is classified as a specialist. And special she is. He can take down enemy fortifications almost better than anyone else. And uh, for the last pick here on Ego Esports, we will once more see Tassadar enter the fray. So we do have double support for each side. One warrior and then the mix of ranged assassins and specialists. It's a very common mix that we've seen now. Three for three. And a lot of these heroes did land into the top five of the most effective heroes picked in Heroes of the Dorm since inception. All right. Uh, well, the stage has been set. The heroes have been chosen. And I think the players uh, can't wait. I mean, maybe they want to wait, maybe they're nervous, but I think they can't wait to get this match underway. Yeah, we're gonna jump right into it, guys. And once more, welcome to Cursed Hollow and Heroes of the Dorm. On the left-hand side, representing Blue from the Florida Gulf Coast University, it will be the Ego Esports. Elodin, Sergeant Balance, Zietz, uh, Zanny Boy, and uh, Whiteout will be the team represented. All right, and uh, on the red team there, Team Maroon, playing for uh, Texas A&M University. We've got Ghost Sun on the Uther there, taking care of the top lane. Another prophetic name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Don't kill me, K there on the ETC. Noctis on the J now. We've got Near Leet on Taranda, and at the bottom lane, we've got Sylvanas taking care of the bottom lane, played by Revenge. Yeah, Revenge looks like she's gonna be holding down the fort, but we also now have the rest of her teammates coming in for a three. Uh, hero stack and traditionally on this map there are, there are a few ways to go about it But if you are not going to be doing any kind of roaming and ambushing earlier on Most heroes and most teams will actually take up residence in a lane and it will traditionally be a 1-1-3 one, one, split Now that being said we do have a lot of potential early ambushing heroes here from both sides All right, uh, we've got a three versus three situation our trap is being set by near Leet and do kill me K and Diablo will take some punishment there. He's taking a lot of damage. Lunar Flare stun on the Diablo. He's being zoned out. Body blocked by Don't Kill Me K. A wonderful move there, but he will get away. Nice healing and shielding there from Danny Boy and Elodin. And uh, the action settles down a little bit more. That was a nice trap with no payoff, but it was a nice try. It was a nice try, but as you said, no payoff, no take on. That's the big important part to take away from this one. And you can already see between the fountain queuing up Ziets as well as Danny Boy there, I mean, those shields from Elodin definitely on the mark, and they will survive out of it. Now, where did their opponents go? It looks like they've actually gone north of it, and they are now trying to set up for this ambush. Unfortunately, don't kill me, Kay. Maybe he went out of that bush a little bit too early, revealed himself, and we're not going to have... Uh, what's called the face check. You just walk into it and then all of a surprise, you got ETC and his axe in your face. Yeah, yeah, no axes in face yet. I'm happy for that. Uh, I do hate that on a, on a Sunday morning. Everyone hates an axe in the face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, another trap here trying to be set by Don't Kill Me K. This time it was near lead that gave away the position somewhat, if you will. She uses a sentinel to get the enemy position uh, scouting information there. Uh, not much going on in the top lane. It's Uther versus Sagara, they are kind of sustaining the situation here. Neither can really make a move. A one versus one is not enough to explosively have something happen, but that middle lane is being occupied there by three heroes for Eagle Esports, and they're trying to catch Noctis here, and they do a lot of damage. Noctis has some teeth herself, nearly took down Sergeant Balance, but both will escape with their lives. Yeah, Danny Boy comes in, Zietz is there to help out as well. Now, Don't Kill Me is actually coming around behind, looking for the body block and this capitalization. Oh. There goes the Diablo. He is going to be out of this for another 10 seconds, and this is really good timing because the Tribute is about to spawn. It's on the map, it's into the
the top, and that is going to be a heck of a hoofing distance for Diablo to walk back. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, he has just respawned back, but it will still take him 15 seconds to come here. Critical time, potentially, to try and get back in there. Nearly to start to try and capture the tribute. A nice Roachling drop off there from Whiteout as he cancels that. And the Roachlings actually have to be cleaned up before you can once again try to capture the tribute. This is what Nearly is trying to do now. Danny Boy will interrupt, but a takedown on Danny Boy. Zagara will get taken out, and with that, the wind has been taken out of their sails, and the first tribute will go deservedly to Team Maroon. Yeah, Team Maroon with a really fantastic setup right there. They also now have the level lead going forward. That means that level 7 with that power gain is going to be quicker for them, and then perhaps even level 10. We'll have to see the next tribute. Which way will that go? Because if we have a quick 2-0, that could be a very very early curse and a really early curse with a team that just hits for example level 10 with those heroics that could be a devastating push yeah devastating or a very happy situation for the victor indeed uh, very powerful all right so now we've got uh, soon we'll have another tribute come up these bruisers have been captured the fight for the red side more action is starting to pick up a little bit at the bottom lane as Zeitz and Danny Boy are trying to set a trap here for revenge. How are his spider senses? Are they tingling or will he overextend? He is quite far forward, but they don't believe he's far enough yet. And they will give up the potential uh, backstab. Yeah, revenge, not knowing that they're there, but saying, I'm just going to play it safe anyways. Goes immediately away from those bushes into the bottom there and just even bullies Elodin out of that lane a little bit. So she's playing phenomenal. At the same time, mercenary camps were taken here from Team Maroon. We're going to have to see if they live to tell the tale by oh. the second tribute. Sergeant Balance running into a bush there. The Lunar Flare misses by near leads. Nice dodge by Sergeant Balance. Will come back in now. Don't kill me, Kevin Strap, but he's being flipped over into the enemy, into his ally team. But the tribute has been captured by Gosan. What will happen in the aftermath here? Nice Lunar Flare by near leads. The aftermath, just not going to be there. Unfortunately, the team's too far away. There was no capitalization and no combos to, great, to grant a takedown to this so far takedown list team of Ego Esports. And again, this is now a really sticky situation for them because two out of three tributes so far have gone into the pockets of Team Maroon. This next one is threatening an early curse and at the same time, Ego Esports is trailing in experience. Yeah, the trailing in experience, not a match score yet. The score is 0-0. Zero, zero. They're feeling each other out, but it is actually in full swing. 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, Cursed Hollow is the first battleground here, and indeed, as you said, they're trailing behind those two uh, curses already. And there's two tributes, and when the next one comes, they can't afford to oh, give it away. Whoa! Yeah, the bush gank was good. Danny Boy and Zeth were sitting there, and the ambush has finally paid off. Eloden there was able to capitalize in some of that glory for the takedown, and that is the first takedown for Ego Esports. This actually could now also be this gate, because there's no response from oh. Team Maroon. They're nowhere near. There's no one defending. Exactly right. They can have at it with impunity. Three heroes killing one tower, killing another. And not only does this take away defensive capabilities from the bottom lane here, every tower killed grants a considerable amount of experience, mm -hmm. which will expedite your way to level 10. And now with this tribute actually spawning towards Ego Esports, it's almost as if they're being rewarded for that fantastic ambush into that bottom lane. Everybody has to funnel right through that little lane, and you can already see Zagara throwing down that Hydralis. That's coming out from Whiteout to throwing down the Banelings as well. There's a lot of stuff that we have to go through here from Team Maroon. Zietz now even getting into that action, but perhaps a little bit too far forward. The heals are going to be huge on him, and we're still going back and forth looking for this tribute. Do you see those two little totems? They're blue heal wards. They were healing the blue team, which is why they look so healthy. However, the red team has one too. They're in the bushes, pulsing away, giving regeneration. They're now feeling healthy enough to move in. They're going on Sergeant Balance. We'll be able to vault away. Zietz, is he in over his head? He will get taken down. And they're losing their warrior. Sergeant Balance is being chased away as well. Yeah, but Revenge using that Haunted Teleport is really going for that kill, uh, for that takedown, really committing to it. But as strange as it sounds, I mean, we had such really good intentions from Eagle Esports. They had fantastic positioning and they were working on the back of a takedown. But by the end of it all, if they lose out that Diablo, that Zietz, it's just not going to be a presence that they can maintain. And now they are cursed. Yeah, they are cursed and they will have to defend in a 5 versus 5 situation. It's level 10 versus 9. A march pit has started. Zietz on the Diablo is being taken down. A wonderful move there. You can get multiple opponents, but if you can secure a sure kill on the enemy warrior, that gives you the lead. The level 5 
versus four, and they're cursed. There's no defensive advantage here whatsoever. Now remember, there's a big fight going here. Actually, that's going to be the Devouring Maw, but Whiteout has no energy left to kind of throw down anything else to follow it up, and the rest of the team was not able to collapse. You can now see, you know, Team Maru just going to resume pushing in. This fort cannot fight back. That's a starfall. Don't kill me, Kay. Throwing down the Apocalypse, but it doesn't actually... Uh, hit anyone and you can now see Team Maroon, they're actually going to be on the retreat here because not only was there a fight mid, their top and bottom minions are pushing up against those forts because of this curse. Yeah, we've seen this time and again, a big fight forcing the defending team to take their attention away and here we've got a big minion wave pushing into this fort. It's about halfway down and the top lane is uh, almost going down. Yep, there we go with the fort. Two forts have been eliminated. Uh, a wonderful move there for Team Maroon. It's still only level 12 versus 11, and the tribute capture count has been reset. So all the possibilities are still open. Now, it wasn't the most devastating curse that it could have been. Team Maroon is up four takedowns to one with those two forts. I've definitely seen uh, bigger, bigger earlier pushes have done more damage. So to the credit of the Eagle Esports, because they were continually fighting out some of those, uh, there was no real big push being done on two split levels from uh, Team Maroon. So uh, a lot of that concentration was in the mid rather than splitting out for the top, the bottom. There was no mercenaries being taken care of either. So, you know, at the same time, it's not looking good this early, at least for Blue, but they're still in it. Now, the players have requested a pause here. This is within their rights to do if they maybe run into some technical difficulties. We'll keep you informed exactly about what is happening as we uh, just kind of analyze the state of the game mm -hmm. a little bit more. Sure. Level 12 versus 11. Now, yep. Heroes of the Storm is a strategy game. We like to call it a team brawler or a hero brawler. Mm -hmm. And in this strategy game, there are elements of RPG, role-playing game. Yes. Now, the way it works, every character, every hero, can gain experience points as the game goes on. This is the levels that we keep talking about. Every time you gain a level, you go up respectively in strength. Uh, for example, you have more defense points, more attack points, more powerful spells. Yep. But there is, uh, there are a few levels that are more special than others, like level 13. Yeah, now, le level 13 is a big spike after the 10 because you get more abilities, more talents. And uh, your base stats, as you said, rise every level. 13, 16, 20 is the big mother load. Yeah, yeah. so it looks like we can go back in. Thank you very much for your patience. It was just a little bit of uh, something to sort out. It's all sorted out. We're ready to continue, and we're jumping back into the game. So we've talked a little bit about the curse. It wasn't the most devastating thing ever here from Team Maroon, but they got those takedowns. They have two forts to their name, and now they're using their map presence to take down this top Grave Golem. This will augment even more pushing, and because the fort is actually missing in the top lane there from Florida Gulf Coast, it's this actually going to be a march towards the keep gates. Yeah, and that's what it will do. The fort was already taken out. It will go to the keep. Now, this, uh, this is a different situation than if you were with us last game than what happened before. The, the boss has also been captured, that Grave Golem by the blue team there, mm -hmm. and it will do likewise. So we don't have that run-on advantage where one of the teams captures the Grave Golem and then they have to defend and then they can also capture the next one. Two golems for one team. It's been split now. So they're pushing, uh, this one's pushing at the bottom fort. And again, the one for team uh, Maroon is actually into that top. Now, again, you gotta really decide, do we push to them, do we defend against them? Especially when there's two grave golems on the map ready to go. I mean, that's a really big pushing force. This gate is virtually non-existent now, but we do got those three defenders here from Florida Gulf. Into the bottom, you're also going to see a very similar situation from Team Maroon and uh, from the Texas A&M. They have defended, and they're actually now pushing out while we've just finally cleaned up top in the Eagle Esports. Now they have reached level 13 Eagle Esports, which means they unlock that extra power spike there, that new talent uh, choice that they can have. Uh, so they can, they can take on a fight, but they're a little bit out of position as the Grave Golem that was defended left the red team at the south lane, which allowed them to immediately take down the fort that was still there. So we've got a total of three forts, three keeps on the blue side against Team Maroon's grand total of five still. Yeah. However, that is not of immediate concern. It's this trap that is happening here. Is it going to be effective? Well, Don't Kill Me K comes right around that corner. He has that mosh pit going. Here's the Starfall as well, but a really good Devouring Maw on the back of it. And the Apocalypse is going to grab 
every single team member there of Team Maroon. Their hit points are not looking good, but at the same time, Don't Kill Me K is still wrecking havoc in the back line there. You see Whiteout die just towards the top. Eloden with that arc on. No force wall today. We'll get that last attack on top of Tyranda as we see Vala and now Tassadar are also going to be dropping. That's four team takedowns for Eagle Esports. They unfortunately did not come ahead of that one, and now it's only Danny Boy left to try to do what he can up against these <laughs> You three. can do it, Danny Boy. Come on, it's a one. No, no, he can't. Oh, He's ouch. just not a hero built for that, Grubby. A very good positioning by Team Maroon there, as it looked like it was being taken away from them for a while. A wonderful combination of Devouring Maw Apocalypse from Eagle Esports, but they were too scrunched in position there in that little alley, and you can truly see if you can spread out and have a better positioning, more spread out, you have the advantage. But they were surprised there. Wonderful move by Team Maroon. The one-two punches from both sides actually were super effective. Not only did Team Maroon have that star fall with the mosh pit, but at the same time, Eagle Esports had a, a very devastating devouring maw followed up by an apocalypse. Unfortunately, as it turned out, the support's just a little bit more on point there from Team Maroon. And they took that fight with five takedowns only against the two. They also got the tribute now in their pocket. So with that previous three tributes now done, we have one more in their pocket. All right, four versus five situation here. Uther for Team Maroon is still at the north. He's coming in quickly as fast as his legs can take him. And there he is in the bushes. He was spotted by Eagle Esports. That Danny boy using his Moonfire to reveal what is happening there in the bushes. And now it's a five versus five. All right, the next tribute is spawning. We're gonna once again have the initiative for Team Maroon, who can set up shop here in these bushes. Keep in mind, when you're hiding in this little underbrush, the shrubberies, you are hidden from sight, and it requires something to reveal you. And here is the ambush, five versus four to go hard on the oh, other wow. and take him down. That was a really great response with that Devouring Maw, but unfortunately, it only brings Ghost Son down. At the same time, we've already seen the Loden. He's dead in the water. He is going to be taken out of this fight for another 30 seconds. It was a great ambush and a great takedown here from Team Baroon. And at the same time, they used the positioning of that tribute to set up that ambush, and now it's going straight into their coffers. Yeah, whenever a tribute spawns, you're, you can be sure that it will draw enemies like uh, bees to honey. And if you set up a an ambush far out, if you know the enemy's positioning, you can catch them where they don't expect you yet. You can pretty much assume the enemy will try to ambush you, but you don't know if it's going to be in the first bushes, the second one, or the third. Now, there is a tool actually available to Team Maroon to help set this up, and haven't really talked too much about it, but it was very integral right there because they set up their ambush on those bushes, but at the same time, the level 7 power gain here from Uther, this time it's not cleanse, it's clairvoyance. And clairvoyance, we're going to see that multiple times this map, can allow you to see a certain point on the map for up to 10 seconds. So they cast it on one way, didn't see any opponents, so they uh. went for the other, and they were able to catch Eagle Esports because of it. So a strategy game like this, it's very much an information gathering game, isn't it? Especially on such a big map like this. That's why... That's uh, it. That's it. That's the clear voice. There it is. Yeah, the very top, the little pulse there uh, around uh, the top by those bruiser camps. So they saw nobody there. All right, we're good. Let's go for this grave golem. Don't know where the enemy team is, but they're nowhere near us. Yeah, and once they get this grave golem, that could almost uh, guarantee a destruction of the bottom keep of the enemy, which will give them those catapults which always tend to push down the enemy lane when they have no more forts and keeps. So again, something to note here. There was a tribute, but we had zero out of three for Ego Esports. Now they're one out of three. That's not a very threatening number. The three out of three is definitely the threatening number. So that is why we saw Team Maroon actually go for the mercenary rather than the tribute. They let it go. It was a big decision for them. And again, I'm going to reiterate, this is a big game of decisions. I think in this point, they took that Grave Golem. They're taking the second one. That is a much better decision than trying to fight over a one out of three. So sometimes we look at a more amateur play, right? And we, we, we play the game ourselves. Yes. And we can play with just about anybody on the internet who has a similar rating as us. And we see impetuous decisions being made. Like, sometimes. oh, there's a tribute. Let's go and get it. Because. Just dot, because. Dot, yeah. dot. <laughs> what is the reason? I mean, could, is there something better we could be doing? As these are the big questions that you need to be asking yourself when you're playing Heroes of the Storm. Now here, Zietz, he's saying, I need to get this tribute. But the team from Team Maroon are actually pushing down this top. The Eagles need him. 
up into this top for this defense. Yeah, but maybe the Eagle said, okay, we want to stage a comeback, not right now, but in a few uh, moments from this. We think we'll lose this keep, but we won't lose the game yet. Devouring Maul, they're catching three people. The Apocalypse follow up the Reign of oh, Vengeance. Three wow. takedowns immediately. A wonderful combination there by Eagle Esports. Now three takedowns, a five versus two situation. Wonderful combination. That's what they need. They lost out the keep from Eagle Esports, and they still have to clean up with this Grave Golem, but they have really stopped this push in its tracks with that fantastic combination. Not only was it the Devouring Maw, but the Apocalypse from Ziads on point. We had the Reign of Vengeance there as well, and it just locked down Team Maroon. I don't think they were really expecting that. I mean, yeah. so far, a lot of these team fights and these engages have gone their way. I think that they actually forgot that the opponents have a combo ready for them, and this is huge for Ego Esports because they've tied up the levels. All right, Jester, what happens now? There's 10 more seconds until the enemy heroes will be coming back. They won't be here right away. How you do push. You, use this advantage? you, you push. push. You yeah. push hard. You push hard. I mean, it's 17 minutes in. That is a long lifespan for that fort. And they already took down the, the bottom one earlier on. The top, maybe not so much of a big uh, issue, but if they're pushing in on top of that fort, that's where Team Maroon is going to defend, and that's where they were. They could not respond to this tribute because of that pressure, and now we have our first curse for Eagle Esports. All right, so that really awesome combo at the own base from Eagle Esports allowed them to get the tribute. So those two curses, which those two tributes, which didn't seem so important earlier on, now they suddenly are. They got the curse. Right, but now, unfortunately, we cannot fight this. We have to run the other way. Elodin is going to be the oh. sacrifice here on that Tassadar because he's just too far forward. It's unfortunate to say, despite the fact that we have that great team fight. We have now the curse. It will actually be the advantage here for Team Marin because they have all of their heroics. Not a single heroic was expended last fight. They just went down ah. too quickly. So now they have those timers, and that's what is the big pressure here. And that's why you're not seeing Eagle Esports actually engage. They needed to wait for their own cooldowns, and now, unfortunately, they don't have a load in. He's still gone out of this game for 25 seconds, and this is going to be map control despite the fact Team Maroon is cursed. It is their map right now. So the curse, it's not without value. We look at the top lane at the top right. Those minions are pushing into the fort. But Let when we speak about the respective power that curses can have, this was one of the weakest you could probably ever have. They got the curse, but they didn't Let even the take curse. down a single enemy fort. Not one. That mid is still actually standing. The top we saw was being defended by a catapult, would you believe? Yeah. It's uh, just not what EGO Esports kind of saw. And, you know, maybe they actually would have benefited a little bit more if they had waited for that tribute. Not necessarily capping it as fast as they did, but just waiting out some more of those timers so that they were in a better position to try to capitalize with a fight. Because as you saw, without those heroics, they ran a little scared. Tassadar on Elodin was actually the, the takedown. And now EGO Esports, unfortunately, are turned 19 to 20. Oh my god, 19 versus 20. But the initiative here for the blue team, Eagles Esports jumping in, devouring while catching one player there knocked this but it's not enough they're trying to steal this bruiser cap it is of relatively low importance more important is what happens in the fight here mosh pit completely on no one don't we kill we get what is he doing Uther gets taken down yeah but the Uther does have that ethereal form he's still gonna get off these heals we saw the rain of vengeance and it did not connect but near lead really low on the hit points flash of light and go sand we said he has level 20 he has redemption at level 20 he's now back from the dead so to speak he has resumed into the world of the living, and with that level 20, believe it or not, Ego Esports will come out on top of that. They didn't get a single takedown, but at the same time, they didn't lose anyone themselves, and they forced Uther with that redemption. So what happens now is one fort got killed, the bruisers, it's like, whatever, they're being destroyed already. All 10 heroic abilities were used, and they're all cooldown coming back anywhere from 20 seconds from now until 70 seconds, and this is kind of relevant. Level 20 was reached, sure, but the heroic abilities oh. are still off of cooldown. So both teams not at their full strength. Now we had the clairvoyance go off once more from Ghost Sun on that Uther. They saw that there was no one here. That's why they're going for this Grave Golem. Unfortunately, as you said, there's no heroics ready to go. And this is just not the pressure that Eagle Esports was able to put up. They are going to suffer another Grave Golem into this bottom lane. And that is not what they want because they have to deal with that or they have to deal with the tribute top, and it's that catch-22 situation again. Oh no, two out of three tributes already captured for Team Maroon. They really, this is an impossible situation. They cannot contest this tribute, they and, have and to let not. it go. Yep. So they've got to accept getting cursed here, and that uh, curse... No, no, see? 
back into that top. But they're, they're waiting. Not, yeah, they are waiting. They know that they have the time and the power. Everyone from Eagle Esports in this bottom lane is defending. That's why the tribute is still there. And at the same time, we're getting another Grave Golem. This is adding uh. advantage on top of advantage for Team Maroon. Because if a Grave Golem at 21 minutes into this game is going to barrel down on your core and you are cursed, that is a very, very powerful combination. Do you think that they will try to end the game with this now from Absolutely. the top lane? I would totally 100% tell my team, we're going with this golem and we're going to game number two. All right, so the alternative choice that they could have is to say, okay, this golem is such a threat from the top lane. We attack one of the other keeps. Now, I am seeing a little bit of that movement already. So yep. They're choosing not to attack with it yet, but maybe get a decisive amount of damage. They're drawing the attention away. Yeah. They're saying, you have to defend this. You have to let that Grave Golem start marching down. If we can actually get a takedown here from Team Maroon, that's just adding, again, advantage to advantage. And, well, we're really looking for that. You see those Lunar Flares? As soon as we get any of those lockdowns ready to go, possibly on top of Zitz there, you saw a little bit of spam. But now, you know, they can't get those. Yeah. Uh, engages, so they're going to take the keep, but at the same time, the golem is on the core. Yeah, that golem, if uncontested, will do a lot of damage on the core, which will make it soften up and easy to take down later. A keep goes down, core has no more shields, core is taking damage, 94, 93, 92. 90%. Can the red team finish it off? Team Maroon is heading in for the kill. They're devouring Maul. Two people. Yeah, wide out with, again, a great devouring Maul. Here's the Apocalypse combo again. Lands on top of Noctis and oh. Revenge. But we had the very incredible Mosh Pit right there. There goes one takedown, two, three. It's so many takedowns here against Eagle Esports. They're dropping like flies. The core is still actually taking damage as well. 50% and counting. We have so many minions on the board that Grave Golem really paved the way by taking out the core and going back and forth. This this is for sure game number one going the way of Team Maroon. Team Maroon, Texas, uh, A&M University, wonderful move there. Take down the core and get that victory. Look at those characters. They're so happy. That's Rejo what they do. They dance. <laughs> <laughs> Rejoicing there in a massive dance of victory as they take Battleground number one, Cursed Hollow, to their name. Absolutely. So, you know, that late game play, we had some really good opportunities for Eagle Esports to come back into that. We saw that with that one-two punch combo. They got the kills. It was a really fantastic combo overall. And I will also give them the credit because level 19 to 20, that engage at the Bruisers really impressed the heck out of me here for Eagle Esports. So they might be down 1-0, but it's their turn for a map up against Team Maroon. And I think we might actually have finally our first best of three going to game three. Yeah, very awesome here with that 1-0 lead. We'll see where it gets to game two just with a 2-0 or a 2-1. But first, what I really want to see is once again one of those awesome moments in the game. We've got two moments lined up here for you, which we'll take a look at. Here is that moment with the uh, double support there trying to outheal the, the combination attack from both. They're both doing a lot of combinations. Look at that red team, they're so low. All of them in the deep red. One of them will actually explode, but Nier is staying alive. And they somehow turned this around. How did they do it? They just had really good supporting characters. That Uther doing some amazing work on top of Ghost Sandy. You still see him doing work even after all of that. Some of his teammates are down, but he's still in there with that Fist of Justice, with those basic attacks, and he's able to start even chasing down the stragglers. And I believe that was the full five-man wipe right there and another tribute that went the way of Team Maroon after that fight. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, but we saw a little bit of a comeback dash there in a defense off the top keep by the blue team. It was uh, a wonderful combination. And the first time we really saw what their plan was all about, devouring them all there, catching three people and the apocalypse arena of vengeance and almost instant deletion of three of the enemy heroes. Uh, a wonderful move there. And if they could do that maybe several times, they would be able to have that kind of They glory. definitely, definitely tried. We saw that in the previous clip, and now this one, this one much more successful. They did get that win and a little bit more of a resurgence into the game, but they did lose out the keep on that one as well, and that's what set up that last golem to come down and swoop in for the win. Not only was it a curse, but that top grave golem it just had nothing in its way. There was no forts, no gates, no keeps, and it was able to march down and end the game beautifully. Yeah, it was really beautiful, and I'm excited to see what these teams will bring to the table on the next battleground. We're going to be showing it to you very briefly here grubby and jester we're loving this i hope you are too thanks for watching and we're just going to go to a short break